Well, I hope you survived Zeta. What's up with that? <laughs> um, it's just been a weird year. Let me tell you a true story. I hate that as a pastor, I have to say this is a true story, but we have a reputation. And so I want you to know, like, this is really, really true. Um, Janet and I were living in Louisville, Kentucky. We had just moved there um, so I could attend seminary. Um, and growing up in South Florida, living in, in a place, the north, and I know for some of you that's kind of funny, um, I loved when it snowed. I turned into a six-year-old when it snowed. And I had a toboggan sled um, that was given to me because they, you know, they knew I was moving north. And we lived in married stu student housing on campus. And on the back side of where we lived with this was this really significant hill. Um, and it was real steep at the beginning, and then it became a little less steep, and there was a ditch at the bottom that banked up and then went on to the road. Well, a bunch of us were on this hill at night, 9, 9.30 at night, um, sledding, and what I wanted to do was pick up enough speed going down the hill that I would go down into the ditch and up the other side and onto the road. I wanted to go across the road. There wasn't a whole lot of traffic because it was snowing pretty heavily. Um, and so after sledding for a while, I went down the hill, down this other part of the hill, and instead of going down into the ditch, I jumped the ditch and slammed into the other side. Um, my, my face slammed into the toboggan, you know, the wooden toboggan on the, on the metal rails. Um, I split my head right here um, and, and had a mouthful of teeth pieces, uh, which is really unnerving. So my friends that I was sledding with freaked out. They walked me back to where I lived, which is real close, just back up the hill and up into the apartment. And when we opened the door to go in, I was expecting Janet to freak out. And I walked in the door, and my face is covered with blood, and I'm spitting out teeth pieces. And Janet just looks at me and says, well, I guess we need to go to the hospital. Um, I was freaking out a little bit inside, not so much about the head wound. I've had the head wounds before, but it was the pieces of teeth. But Janet was calm. She was collected. She was in control. She was unshakable. And in that moment, I needed her to be that. I wasn't expecting her, and she was phenomenal in that moment. So we got in the car. She drove to the hospital, which should have been a 20, 30-minute trip. It ended up being like a two-and-a-half-hour trip just because of how snow-packed the roads were. And I got stitched, and I've had bonding over my teeth over the years. But what impressed me about that moment was Janet's d demeanor, how unshakable she was. Uh, last Thursday in this video, um, I talked about some terms. I talked about dislocation, that feeling of disorientation. Uh, things used to be this way, and they're not that way anymore, and I don't know what to do with it. Um, and it, and it affects how I view myself, who am I, um, where do I belong, like where do I fit in, and then how that ties into fear and insecurity. Um, and, and this present day with COVID and the election and everything going on, there's a lot of fear and insecurity and uncertainty in the world, and so we're kind of wrestling with, well, who am I then, and where do, where do I belong? So this Sunday, we're going to do a deep dive into all of this and kind of weave it all together. Um, Looking at a passage that was really laid on my heart, just within the past couple weeks, we changed our series for this. Um, in Hebrews, where it talks about an unshakable kingdom, that the world is being shaken, which seems to fit, and all the things that are shakable are falling away, and what is remaining is unshakable. And so this passage, this passage will speak into us identifying, well, who, who, am, who am I really? Where do I belong? And it, and it deals with fear and security, and it says things will be shaken away. Things that you held on to that you thought was, were secure need to be shaken away. And the only thing that remains is what is unshakable. And so we'll do kind of a, a unique conversation this Sunday. Um, next Wednesday at the gathering, which is our first of the month um, where we, we, we gather together, we're going to have an actual conversation. We'll do mass safe distancing, but I want us to talk about things that are shakable and how to find the things that are unshakable. Being a church that believes that um, when, when we talk about what's unshakable, it will draw people toward, um, toward God. And then we'll conclude it next Sunday. Um, I want us to be a place, a church, that provides that same kind of unshakability that Janet was for me when I had that sledding accident. So, 
Um, this Sunday, we will look at why we hold on to shaky things, what are shaky things, and then how to make sure that what we're holding on to is unshakable, um, that it's steady, that it's solid. We'll talk about it next Wednesday, and then we'll finish it um, on November 8th. So, um, take care. Have a great rest of the week, and then we will see you Sunday in person. And we'll also live stream um, what it means to hold on to unshakable things. Take care.